Well, since 1959, Barbie has been empowering young girls, teaching them that they can be anything they desire. But what our favorite doll did not prepare us for is how challenging and nearly impossible it is to succeed as a woman in this country. One of the stars of the film, America Ferrera, had an entire monologue that speaks to this painful truth. Part of it reads, you have to be a boss, but you can't be mean. You have to lead, but you can't squash other people's ideas. She goes on to say, always stand out and always be grateful, but never Never forget that the system is rigged, so find a way to acknowledge that, but always be grateful. So true, yeah, right? Sure All right, is. so how can women not only change this way of thinking, but also teach our daughters how to break the mold? Joining us now to talk about that is Naviksha Baga, a woman and diversity advocate. Welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much, ladies. All right, so let's off the bat here, let's start by talking about what impact uh, do you think the Barbie movie has had on, on women's empowerment? You know, first things first, I mean, this whole paradigm about gender bias and how does the woman fit into the whole uh, framework of gender power system. I think this conversation has been percolating and brewing in the backwaters, office corridors, kitchen huddles for centuries and in the context of the Barbie for decades, you know, for sure. Mm -hmm. So this movie, I feel, has been a very key catalyst in ripping that carpet off mm -hmm. and in, you know, so to say, figuratively just opening mm -hmm. the floodgates and forcing us as a society to recognize this power uh, uh, dynamic and to have uh, these relevant discussions and to recognize the elephant in the room. Well, so let me ask you this. How can parents and caregivers uh, encourage, especially children, to have more of an open mind, especially at a very young age? I think the one superpower that we have neglected to recognize and uh, reinforce for the next generation is that compassion for others and love and acceptance for yourself. Mm -hmm. Self-love and compassion are true superpowers. Mm -hmm. And kids learn most intimately from the ones in their immediate vicinity, right? So parents and caregivers are their primary teachers. They will learn using you as that main role model in their life. We also talk a lot about falling into the comparison trap. I once heard to compare is to despair. How do we not fall into that trap? I think what's worked for me in my life and what I try and inculcate in my own kids is that be your own personal barometer. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have your own personal bar. Am I better than who I was yesterday, six months ago? Am I working hard and consistent on my own craft? And am I making that better? I think focus on yourself, right? That's again, a, an immense skill to have. Forget the rest, be your own. Best. I know I know it can be hard, but along the same line, should should we or should kids be looking at celebrities and influencers for some type of inspiration? Again, I think you know, within their closest circle has the greatest impact and influence mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. them. And I feel everyday uh, heroes are really underrated. There is something special, something unique to learn from everyone whether it's family values, whether it's dedication, whether it's skill, intelligence, whatever, right? So learn wherever you can and learn from whoever you can. And I feel media power, uh, superpowers or personalities have been pumped up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very hard to disassociate the person right. from the persona. Yeah. Well, there's also an entire generation of people who are, I guess, ingrained to think that gender bias is the correct way. How do we reverse that? I feel our generation is, uh, you know, has come here at a very pivotal time because we have the power now to expedite progression or we can set the clock back. Mm -hmm. Because think about it, now we are like a globally a connected organism where within moments news travels, mm -hmm. we are so interconnected. So whatever values we imbibe and we project right now really have the power of that impetus to take on. So maybe in the year 2300 or 2400, possibly our generations could be debating other problems and not the gender bias. So good. Such a good conversation to be having. Thank you so much for joining us today with your insight. Thank you so much and more power to all of us. <laughs> yes, for I sure. I like that. All right. And if you like more empowering tips, follow Naviksa on Instagram. Her information, you see it right there on your screen.